Hi, this is Tom Muro with World Class Coaching with another in our series of animated drills. This week I want to look at short corners for young teams. When you've got younger teams, and in the U.S., U11 teams and below, so U8s, 9s, 10s, U11s, can't head the ball. So when you have a corner kick situation, lining up with one player taking the corner, as I'm showing here, and then three players lined up in the box, and you've got two defensive players back here. And I'm just going to show the attacking players uh, just in terms of making it clear. But having a situation like this where we're just lumping the ball into the box and hoping somebody gets on the end of it, and we have a player here that's going to serve an inconsistent quality of cross. We're going to have players here who don't necessarily understand the timing of runs yet and, and trying to line up with the ball and, and, you know, box organization. And so we're really trying to hit a bullet with a bullet in this case. I just don't think it's something that, you know, is a high percentage opportunities. I see more goals scored by the defending team from corners than I do from the attacking team because a, a team will overcommit and somebody will chase a ball up here in, into an area and suddenly a team wins the ball on defense and, and just breaks forward. So why not use this situation as a way to teach players how to combine to create goal scoring opportunities? opportunities. So rather than lining up and crossing, what I have my teams do to begin with kind of the first stage is to have them get two players to the ball can be any two players. I'd rather it not be defenders because then we're just pulling, you know, one defender out and just leaving one defender back, which is a little dangerous. I'd rather the midfield players and the forwards, you know, organize this. Having the players do it who are closest to the ball will help to make it happen quickly, which is really the goal because we want to have some element of surprise, at least in the beginning, so that we can try to, you know, play and combine. So the idea is having the player nearest the corner flag touching the ball to the other player and just rolling it out in front of them. And then this player overlapping or running behind them. Sometimes I find that young players have trouble with the word overlap. If you tell them just run behind them, then they understand it. Another part that you'll have trouble with with young players is you'll have the player farthest from the flag touching it to the player closest, and you'll have this player overlap out of bounds. I've seen it more than once. And so just make sure the players understand player closest to the flag touches the ball and runs behind their teammate into space. And now this player then dribbles the ball into this space. So with this player, we want dribbling toward the goal. All right, what's going to happen are basically two things are going to happen. Either number one, you're going to have a player uh, from the defending team running out to the ball. So we'll, we'll have a defender out here. A defender will run out to the ball or they won't. If the player doesn't run out to the ball, then we can dribble toward the goal and try to find a pass in here. If a defender does come out, which most of the time happens, then we'll have a pass that I'll show here to this player that has overlapped or run behind in order to run toward goal. Now, this may happen in the box. More often, it happens outside the box, but the perspective on things here just kind of has them in the box at this point. But I think you get the idea. It's a touch, a run behind, and then attack the goal. Now, obviously, this player you know, who's attacking the goal, if they can find a player who's closer to the goal, if they can find a player here to pass to and shoot, great. All right, but if the pass is open, isn't open into the middle because of defenders, but is open for the overlapper, great. So this is the first stage. This is what I did during the fall season. Every corner kick we took, we did this. And then you'd hear the, the coach for the other team or the parents for the other team often saying, they're going to take it short. They always take it short. And so what you'll see next is you'll see teams start to line two players up out here. And so when a team does this, what I want my player with the ball to do is to first see if we can split them. Because if we can split these two players, and they're pretty close together in this case, but oftentimes we can split these two players with a pass, then I want one of the players in the box finding the, win the window. If they can find the window between those two players, great. Then we have an opportunity to try to find a ball into the middle with that initial pass. And that's different than just lumping it into the middle. Now we're finding a very direct pass, but we're trying to split these two players. What I'll also do is I'll tell this player, and as, as the players kind of start to understand it, if two players come out, I'll tell this player to move away from the ball. Because if they move away from the ball and this player comes with, now we have a much easier splitting opportunity. If that player doesn't come with, then what we can do is we can still make that pass. We just don't have the overlap that we had before. Now we have a pass here and then maybe a pass into here. And we've beaten these two players. So that's the initial phase of teaching this short corner. The next thing I would do 
and what I will be doing this spring with my teams is teaching them how to have a player show for the ball for a short corner rather than lining up and having it be quite so obvious. We'll have a player who is lined up at the near post and we'll have the other players lined up outside the box and we'll have this player show towards the ball. Now the ball is passed to this player and then we have the passing player come out and show at an angle to receive the ball back. That's one thing that can happen. The other thing that could happen is that this player receives the ball and turns toward goal. If they can turn toward goal, either by turning inside or outside, depending on where the pressure is, now they can face goal or they can find a shot or they can find a pass. Just having turned, maybe they can find a pass to a teammate after the turn. And that's going to require this player to check their shoulder and see if they've got a player that's marking them or not. So now we have some options here. We have the turn. We have the layoff. If we do lay it off to this player who's shown after the initial pass, now this player has the choice between passing to a player at the top of the box or maybe this player's made a run toward the back post and we can try to combine. But the goal here is to try to create some combinations from a corner kick rather than just kicking it into the box and hoping for the best. So there's lots of other combinations you can do. These are the simplest two. I've shown them with a 7v7 lineup. You can do something very similar with 9v9. So give this a try with your teams in the comment section below. Let me know your favorite short corners for young players. Or if there's some variation of this, some suggestion that you have, I'd love to hear it. Thanks a lot.